Good morning, Wesley. Christ is risen. Oh, come on. You knew how this works. Christ is risen. Yes, there you go. Now we're talking. Uh, if you would, take a moment. Please register your attendance. Let us know you're here. Uh, also, let us know your prayer concerns. It's all right there in the same spot. Also, when you are on that page, uh, it's, you will notice that there, there have been people who uh, joined the church. And I don't know if you know it or not, but this morning, the uh, Treva's parents, uh, the Wilkerson's, Carol and Larry, joined our church. And so, Treva, uh, there's Treva, and her parents are official. <laughs> and, she's, and it was easy, and they're on board, and so we're very happy to have them. Uh, also, if you want to give online, you can do that uh, by... Uh, simply uh, following the bouncing ball, so to speak, or you can drop your offerings in one of the boxes, uh, bring them by the church office, or mail them in, whatever works best for you. Uh, we are glad you are here, and there are a number of announcements to share with you. Uh, our Board of Stewards will be meeting Tuesday night at the 26th at 6.30 in Bible 101, and all are welcome. Uh, WOW will be meeting this uh, week, uh, and they're uh, doing the study of Sarah, uh, presented by Bobby Lee at 9.30 in the uh, uh, parlor. Also, uh, your lotus all around the building, these yellow signs, they're everywhere. Uh, they even have a little red square on most of them out there. That's one of those QRC codes, which will take you, if you point your camera at it, it'll take you right straight to the registration page for uh, Lakeview. And we need to get those registrations in by May the 1st. Uh, we've, we're trying to figure out, uh, of all the fundraisers, we're trying to figure out who's going how much of the fundraiser can apply to each kid and to the adults so that we can sort of figure out what kind of scholarships we're going to be offering everyone. Uh, and so we're excited uh, that uh, at, I think you had maybe over 30 possible kids. It's currently registered with a possibility of over 30. <clears throat> there you go. So it's a, a bunch of kids and uh, this is not kind of like a, a real glue and cement uh, into the life of our church. And so uh, it's a, an important ministry, and we really do need to get those registrations done as soon as possible. We are continuing with Wacky Wednesdays. Every Wednesday at uh, 5.30, they have dinner, and at 6 o'clock, there's Bible study for both adults and also our grief group for our adults, and then we have children, youth, and tweens. And we got a lot of kids there every single night. So if the good Lord is putting it on your soul to come and uh, help us, come on over and help us because we could use some help. Uh, on those uh, Wednesday nights uh, even if it's just come eat dinner and be with some of the kids I mean they would love to have your presence there so please uh, think about that our adult Bible study is going to be uh, that small group will continue to meet also uh, as I mentioned to you earlier next Sunday will not be communion Sunday so let me get that in your heads we won't be doing communion Sunday next Sunday we'll be doing it on May the 8th which is Mother's Day and we're very blessed that George Hearn is going to be our preacher next week I will be out of town for my daughter's 40th birthday uh, and a little celebration that's uh, going to ensue in Austin, Texas, and so I'm really excited about that. And then on the 22nd of uh, May, I'm going to be doing my grandson's baptism. So uh, I will be missing that Sunday, and uh, Gary Richards will be your preacher on that Sunday. But So I just want you to get in your head mainly that communion is not next Sunday, it's May the 8th. So that's one of the ones I want you. That's what I want you to remember. And then also our men's uh, uh, Methodist men will be having their regular Saturday, uh, second Saturday uh, breakfast at uh, eight o'clock in the CLC. And so all men are invited. And then I wanted to let you know that our graduation day celebration will be at the 9 a.m. service on uh, the 15th of May. And that will be for all of our graduating seniors as well as other graduates, but particularly our graduating seniors. And we would like to ask everyone, if you would, go to the website and write a congratulatory note to our graduating seniors. There's a place where you can do that on the website. So you'll find a seniors being highlighted, and then right next to it is write a note to our seniors. And if you do that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, did we miss anything, Teresa? Did I get it all? You think I got it all? All right, very good. See, I just let you do this. Because <laughs> she said if I say it to her, it confuses her. So I love it. So choir practice is back on uh, this coming Thursday at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much. And by the way, wasn't that beautiful last Sunday? Wasn't that just amazing and gorgeous? And 
we were blessed and so thank you so much to our choir um, anything else all right if you would let's stand for our call to worship number 617 and remain standing for our opening hymn number 6368 uh, be seated let us go to the Lord in prayer our most gracious loving risen Savior Jesus Christ what a joy it is to come into your presence this morning with shouts of he is alive truly he is risen and Lord we are blessed beyond belief that you have done this marvelous work for all of us you have completed the rout of all the demons and you have destroyed the power of death. And so we fear not. We fear not. Lord, we are blessed to be able to live in a beautiful country where we can worship you in spirit and truth and in freedom. We thank you that we can have ministries that reach out to our community, that take the love of Christ to those who are in desperate need we thank you for all those opportunities that you place before us but mostly Lord we just thank you for letting us come into your presence this morning where we can pour out our hearts and where we can just simply worship you with all of our being and become who you made us to be because you made us to be those who worship you Lord we're so grateful that you finished the work that you set out to do in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that you've called us to live resurrection lives, living in the power of the resurrection each and every day, carrying the love of Christ to all we meet. Lord, we are blessed beyond measure. And we thank you. Mostly we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, coming into our world to save us and who taught us to say and pray together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our hymn of prayer number 367. you sing with me.
Miss Chelsea, where are you? There she is. Come on up, Chelsea. Tammy's out of town, and Chelsea's in charge, and so we invite the tweens and children to come forward for our tweens and children's message. You got it? <laughs> come on in. Have a seat. Good morning. How are y'all? Good? <laughs> what is the first thing that a teacher does at the beginning of the school day? She takes the role, right? I don't know about your teacher, but the very first thing many teachers do is they take attendance. The teacher opens up her book and she begins to call out the names. There's Johnny and Susie and Mary. As the student names are called, they raise their hand and they say here yeah if the teacher calls Caleb's name and he is not there the teacher marks in her book that he is absent why is it important for the teacher to know that Caleb is absent it's important because she needs to know what he missed out on so that she can tell him that's similar to something that happened in our Bible lesson today it was the Sunday after Jesus was crucified and his disciples had gathered together in a locked room. They were together in that locked room because they were afraid. They were afraid of what Jesus' enemies might do to them. The Bible tells us that even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and he stood in there with his disciples. When the disciples saw Jesus, they were very happy. One of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, he was not there. I don't know why Thomas wasn't there. Maybe he was sick or just decided to stay home that day. <clears throat> the next time the disciples saw Thomas, they told him what he had missed. They said, we have seen Jesus and he is alive. Thomas didn't believe them and he said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. The next week, the disciples were in the house again and this time Thomas was with them. The very same thing happened. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and he stood among his disciples. He turned to Thomas and he said, see my hands, put your fingers here, reach out, your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believe Thomas didn't need to touch the wounds where the nails had been or put his hand into his side he fell to his knees and he said my Lord my God he knew that that was his Jesus right one of the great promises Jesus made was when he said where two or three gather in my name I am there so each week, we come together in the name of Jesus to worship and to praise him. So what do we miss out on if we are absent? We miss, <laughs> we miss out on the same thing that Thomas missed out on when he was absent, the chance to be with Jesus. All right, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, we have come into this house and gathered in your name because, because your we, we want to be with you. We have come to worship and praise your name. Amen. 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 Great job, Chelsea. <laughs> Are we not blessed to have Chelsea? <laughs> Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from John's Gospel, uh, beginning in the 20th chapter, the 24th verse. And since it is a reading from the Gospel, would you stand for the reading of the Gospel? We should all be that comfortable in church. Amen. 
This is one of my favorite stories. Now Thomas, called the twin, was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said to him, we, ha we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, put my fingers into the print of the nails, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside. Thomas with them, Jesus came. The doors were shut, and he stood in their midst. Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here. Look at my hands. Reach your hand here. Put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving. Be believing. And Thomas, and Thomas answered him, saying, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have seen me and you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you, Cliff. Christ is risen. All right. This is the season of Easter tide. It is is a joyful time in the life of the church it's a fantastic time it's an amazing time and yet in the midst of this tremendous moment in the life of the church on the very next Sunday after Easter Sunday is the Sunday you normally preach on doubt because that's when we're we're going to look at the Apostle Thomas who was most was called doubting Thomas we're going to look at his story a little more in just a few moments, but on this day, I'm always tempted to preach on, not this passage, but on Matthew 28, verse 17. And you might be saying to yourself, okay, what's Matthew 28, verse 17? You probably, ought to, you probably realize it, but you just don't realize it. The verse says, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but, and here's the big two words, some doubted. Now, now, let me give you the context for that passage. You know, Jesus has risen from the dead. He's spent 40 days with all the disciples, and he's appeared many, many times. And, and he's taken all the disciples up on the mountaintop, and, and he appears to them, and he's going to give them the Great Commission, and then we're going to have the Ascension. And that's, that's the, the context for this verse. And the Scripture says that Jesus appeared to them, and many believed and worshipped him, but some doubted that floors me how is that what's going on I mean here he is the resurrected God man himself risen from the dead the marks of the crucifixion are still on him and so he's wounded there and he's standing right there and they see this man that they have they saw hanging on the tree of the cross and He's about to be lifted up into the sky, but the scripture says that even in the midst of all this evidence, so to speak, there are these two words, some doubted. How was that even possible? Well, I'll tell you how that's possible. Because my friends, make no mistake about it, doubt is a normal part of human life, especially in this day and age where the so-called secular ideology of rationalism has taken hold. Doubt comes to all of us, my friends. Me too. I'm no exception. And the reality is, if I don't know what to do when doubt shows up, 
doubt is going to take root in my heart. And when doubt becomes rooted in my heart, the reality of my faith and the reality of my relationship with God begins to diminish, crash and burn. That's true of any relationship, is it not? And if it's true in our physical relationships, if it's true in our marriages, in our families, and with our friends and our co-workers, if that's true in the everyday aspects of our life, then it's also true in our relationship with God. Because our relationship with God is a lot like any other relationship, except our relationship with God keeps us connected to life. Our relationship with God connects us to the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. It is my relationship with God that gives me the ability to understand this life. It is my relationship with God that gives me the ability to understand how to live in this fallen world. Disconnected from that relationship, I am disconnected from that body of wisdom that gives me the ability to live life well. So, what do we do with doubt? Well, now let's take a look at the Apostle Thomas this morning. You know, people are fond of calling him Doubting Thomas, but in the early church, he was actually not known as Doubting Thomas. He was actually known as Believing Thomas. Why? Because we don't take a snapshot of a person at their worst moment and make it their whole life. Thank God. Thank God our lives aren't measured by the worst day in our life. I'm so glad that when I was a teenager, there were no such things as camera phones, okay? I made a lot of bad choices. But know this, if you don't deal with doubt, you're going to stumble and you're going to fall and you're going to have some of those bad moments in your life and you better hope uh, by the way, I don't think that hope is even possible now. You better hope nobody has a video camera because everybody's got a video camera. So how does Thomas get his doubt changed from doubt to belief? Well, the first principle is this, folks. Don't not show up when Jesus shows up. Okay, all you English teachers, I know you're probably saying, that's a, that's a cr cruddy sentence, but okay. Don't not show up when Jesus shows up. I, I, there's got to be a better way to say that. Thomas's first mistake was that he wasn't with the rest of the disciples when Jesus appeared through that locked door. He could have had, had all of his questions answered and dealt with if he had just been at the right spot at the right time. And so when it's when I neglect... And this is how it applies to me. It's when I neglect my attentiveness to, what, to that which is most important. When I fail to properly prioritize my faith and, and my prayer and my spiritual disciplines, then doubt easily takes root in my heart. Thomas's first mistake was that he wasn't where he ought to have been. He was not with the disciples. And if you want to deal with doubt in your life, brothers and sisters, find a way to be connected to the regular spiritual disciplines of the Christian faith. Because when I am connected to the regular spiritual disciplines of the Christian faith, like prayer and fasting and almsgiving, giving to the poor, the energy and the grace and life-giving power of our relationship with God continues to keep us connected to our Lord Jesus Christ. It puts us at the right place at the right time. And if you want to deal with doubt in your life, show up. Stay connected and stay consistent. Now, when Thomas was finally confronted by Jesus, what does he do? Does Jesus rebuke him? Notice what Jesus says. Notice what he doesn't say. He doesn't say, shame on you, Thomas. Jesus says, Thomas, come, look, here are the holes. Stick your fingers in here. Check out my side, Thomas. Don't be doubting, be believing. And so what does Thomas do? If you want to control doubt in your life, 
do what Thomas did ne the very next thing what did Thomas do he was very quick to admit that he was wrong first don't disconnect yourself from the disciplines of the faith and number two be quick to admit when you're wrong be quick to say my Lord and my God be quick to find that spot in your heart that tender spot in your heart where your where repentance comes from don't run away from the church when you sin run toward it when you make a mistake when you fall down when you doubt when you when you get to the point where you are not living the life that you should be living don't run away from the church just that's just a trick of the enemy to keep you from the only medicine that can actually heal you don't do that if we don't stop, if we don't find a way to keep our hearts ready for repentance, we will stumble when doubt comes and it will begin to take root in our lives. So be quick, be quick to admit when you're wrong. And finally, if we're going to deal with doubt in our lives and if we're going to teach our children how to deal with moments of doubt in their lives, we're going to have to you know, we're going to have to, uh, to quick, be quick to worship. You see, brothers and sisters, the most powerful reality about our human nature is that we were made to worship. It's in our DNA. It's built into us from the very foundation of our creation. And guess what? We're going to worship something. And guess what else? We are our truest self when we are worshiping our creator. How so? Because it is in your truest self brothers and sisters that doubt will attack us and it will try to prevent us from learning how to adore and worship our creator who gave us worship he gave us worship not for his benefit he gave us worship for our benefit and for it is in worship that our cre in, uh, when we worship our creator that's when we discover our purpose that's when we find our meaning Remember, God does not need anything. He does not need us to tell him how wonderful he is. He already knows. He did not give us worship for him. He gave us worship for us. And we need it desperately. It is our first duty. The purpose of worship is to establish the rhythm of prayer in our lives so that it can form us and shape us and mold us into who we were created to be. Why? So that we can fight the power of doubt in our lives by knowing what it is like to be in God's presence in worship. So on this Sunday when we remember Thomas, believing Thomas, we know that we are going to experience moments moments of doubt just like he did thank God that doesn't define our lives we're going to have times in our lives when we will all doubt and that is normal and it is to be expected and the key to fighting it is to not be surprised by it but to deal with it by first being where we're supposed to be secondly by being quick to repent and admit where we are wrong and finally by knowing who we really are we were created to worship our God our Creator and so this is your invitation on Thomas Sunday and if we do these things guess what doubt is going to have a real hard time finding a place in our hearts Amen? Glory to God. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, each and every day we are surrounded by greater and greater doubt. And this is nothing new. And when we doubt our relationship with you, we lose our connectedness to the reality that we were made to worship you and you alone. Help us not only to stay connected to you through our prayers and worship, but help us also to be quick to admit where we are wrong. And as we worship you, as we were meant to do, let our doubts diminish and help us to continue to come and to become all that you made us to be in the first place. All this we ask in the name of Christ our Lord, our risen Savior. Amen.
And would you stand as we affirm our faith in God? For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And would you remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, number 415. This hymn may not be real familiar, <clears throat> so I'm going to sing through the first verse once. It's really short, but it's a wonderful ending hymn. sing it, you're going to sing it lower. <laughs> that was verse one. Okay, here we go. Does that sound better? <laughs> okay. Take up my cross, the Savior said, if thou wouldst my disciple be, deny Remember, doubt will have a hard time finding a place to land in your heart if we are, one, stay qu uh, connected, two, quick to repent, and three, quick to worship. Amen? Go in God's peace. <laughs>